This video is going to introduce what I call model accounting. So whenever we fit a model, um, one of the first questions we have is, um, how well does this model predict why? Um, another question that we have is, you know, wh which of these predictors are, um, are, are doing something for us and that they, um, you know, they're, they're, they're uh, enabling a, a good prediction of why versus which of these predictors don't really do much, you know, in that if I were to drop them, uh, my predictions wouldn't uh, be harmed very much. Um, this is a, a very, you know, important topic that we're going to come back to um, in, in a couple weeks when we get to test sets and cross-validation. But I want to start introducing some of the ideas. And um, we're also going to cover um, a, a significance test uh, in this chapter that we don't really talk about later when we get to cross-validation. All right, so let's just say um, we fitted some regression model. Now, now that model, um, I'm going to call the full model. And uh, the full model has everything in it. Okay, so it has all P predictors in it. Um, we're going to be comparing that with, um, with, with, a, with, with what we're going to call a reduced model in a second. Okay, so where we get rid of some predictors, and then we want to see, you know, how much uh, have I sacrificed in terms of my predictive power by going from the full model to the reduced model. All right, so how do we evaluate how well a model does? Well, um, the starting point is, is the objective function for least squares. So remember, we use ordinary least squares to fit these. And um, uh, the objective function was minimize the sum of squared errors. Um, we're going to see later that that's equal to um, the deviance, so something called the deviance. Um, so let me just uh, kind of refresh your memory of what this is about. Um, let's say that my full model is this, y equals beta naught plus beta 1x plus some errors. So in this case, I only have one predictor in it. Here's my x, here's my y. Uh, I'm going to take it easy on my on, on the data points. Let's say I just have a couple data points like this. Then this could be my regression line. Now, uh, the vertical deviations from the line, okay, so this is a y. This would be a y hat. Uh, this is a y, you know, we call that y1. Uh, this could be y2. This could be y hat 2. So, these uh, differences here are the residuals. So we've been labeling those, you know, e hat one, this would be e hat two. And then our objective function in regression is the sum of the squared values of these. So we're going to sum from i equals one to n. These e hat values, to get rid of the sign, we just square them. Um, or you can write this as y sub i minus y hat sub i squared. All right, so that's a measure of how much information I've lost by going from these original y's to the model, which gives me y hats. So if I summarize, you know, the, the, the values of you know, my predictions of y with these y hats, how much information is lost? All right. Now, um, the starting uh, kind of starting point for this is, um, you know, we want to compare this versus not having anything in the model. So um, th this is um, call, called the omnibus test, where um, all of our um, predictor variables uh, are equal to zero. Now, this is a special t case of a reduced model. All right, so um, let's let's go draw this. It turns out that when you um, constrain all of your predictor variables to have a slope of zero, it's like you don't have any predictor variables in the model anymore, um, your best estimate using least squares can be shown to be just the mean of y. So let's go um, draw that um, off on my, uh, my, my scratch pad over here. Uh, I'll do it in red this time. So 
just to indicate this, let's just say that we have um, beta 1 equal to 0. So if I have some points, try to draw roughly the same points, uh, and if I've constrained my slope to be 0, so all I have is an intercept now, the best fit would be this. So that's y bar. And we could ask the same question. Well, how much is lost if I um, uh, use this red model uh, to summarize the data? And so then the answer would be, uh, what is the difference between my y's? So this is a y1, this is maybe a y2. Um, and these would be like my new errors. We're going to have a special name for this. These are called the total sums of squares. So this is just going to be the sum i equals 1 to n, uh, my y sub i's minus y bar squareds. All right, so this is kind of like the worst possible model because it doesn't um, really use x at all. For any x, we get the same predicted value. It's like we've just com completely forgotten about our predictor variables. So this is like the worst possible model. This is the model we have, and we compare this model with this model. Um, I didn't mention this on the side, but the uh, coefficient of determination r squared is just 1 minus rss over tss. Okay, so if um, rss, uh, I'll just draw um, a specific example. Let's say we have a perfect fit. Okay, so our line goes exactly through them. Um, in this case, rss would be 0. need a second s there. And therefore, r squared would be 1 minus 0 over some positive number, which is equal to 100%. So we could say 100% of the variance in y gets explained by knowing x. Um, just as another uh, quick example, maybe I have a situation like this. All right, and so I'm just trying to make it so that there is no relationship. In this case, the least squares line which I'll use uh, with black again, is this. And the line of the means is maybe this. And they're pretty much on top of each other. So I'll just note that um, RSS is approximately equal to TSS. And so what happens then is, well, you get R squared is equal to 1 minus RSS over TSS. But this whole thing is about 1, just say about 1. Therefore, um, the regression line captures 0% of the variance in this data. So you could say 0%, and that's not a very good fit. All right, let's go back to the, the, the video here. All right, so usually the full model is going to explain more than the null model. And to illustrate this, I'm going to go back to um, the new food data set that we had before. Now, when you fit a model, you can get these sums of squares um, with the deviance command. So, uh, if I fitted the null model, so the null model is where I only have an intercept in it, what you should note is that I have about 184,000 that I've left unexplained. So this would be like my first red picture, except it would be, you know, now I have, um, you know, two predictors that I'm worried about. But um, uh, in this case, the, the, the line would be flat, and so I'm, I'm leaving about 184,000 unexplained. Well, let's go bring one predictor in. So if I just bring ads in, uh, what you're going to note is that my sums of squares, the objective function value, has gone down a little bit. So now my, um, my you know, I've, I've left about 182,000, if you round it, unexplained. And I would say that, you know, by bringing ads in, I explain about 2,000-ish um, of the variance. Alternatively, I could bring in um, both ads and reps, or ads, ads and volume, um, which, I, which I do in this third model. And you, you see that once you do that, your objective function value uh, just drops uh, to about 87,000. So it looks like 
this combination of ads and volume um, really uh, you know, helps my predictions a lot because the errors get a lot smaller. All right, so just in summary, what, what, what we could say is that advertising explains about, well, I said 2,000, is really about 2,500 if you do the exact math, while the combination explains, well, the difference, which is about 97,000. Okay, so we, um, the objective function value would both in as 87,000, the original one was, one was 84. So we're explaining about 97,000. All right, so there are two commands in R that keep track of what happens when you fit various versions of a model. So the two commands are ANOVA and DROP1. Um, ANOVA computes something called sequential sums of squares. DROP1 computes something called partial sums of squares. Of the two, the partial sums of squares are far more useful to us, but I want to go over both with you just so that um, you, you kind of have a complete understanding of what's going on. ANOVA is also kind of important, um, uh, but not as, not as useful as drop one. All right, so what I did here was um, I computed the total sums of squares by hand. And if I just take the variance of uh, sales and I multiply that by n minus one, we end up with what we had on the previous slide which was 184,000. Now I'm gonna be drawing all of these sums of squares with some stacked bar charts uh, over here. So what you should note is that the total variation in the data is 184,000 and that's where this line is. Now, um, let's go fit some models. So I'm gonna go fit as, as I had on the previous slide, uh, sales regressed on both advertising and volume. And I'm gonna use the ANOVA command to get the um, uh, sequential sums of squares, or the, these are also called um, extra sums of squares. They, go, they have a lot of different names. They're also called type one sums of squares if you're um, using SAS or SPSS. All right, now let's go um, try to understand what's happening here. Um, what we end up with is that we get a line that says advertising explains 2,500. Well, where's that coming from? That's coming from how much the objective function gets reduced when I bring advertising alone in. Okay, so this the interpretation here is you bring advertising in alone, you reduce the objective function by 2,500. Now I've tried to show that with this little sliver down here. So the difference between zero, so, and, and bringing advertising in, I explained 2,500. Now, when I bring in both advertising and volume, volume uh, explains, or reduces the um, objective function by, um, by another 94,000. So the difference between this bottom line, so what advertising did and what the model is like doing is 94,000. Therefore, the sum of these two numbers equals how much gets explained when you have ad advertising and volume in together. So if, you, if we just did this math in our head, this is going to be 97.7 thousand. And all right, so, so that's roughly what, what that number is right there, 90, 96.8. Let's go try that again. Um, so if I take, um, this would be 96.7. So yeah, all right, that works. I, I, I misspoke earlier. And what you'll see is that what's left over is 87,000. So the difference between the model sums of squares and the total sums of squares is 87,000. And that's what we found earlier. That's that 87,000. Now, let's go try a drop one. I think drop one is very well named because it tells us what happens when you drop a term. 
So these are the partial sums of squares. And so um, what you'll see is that when you drop advertising, let's, let's not talk about advertising yet, let's just talk about volume. Dropping volume increases the objective function by 94,000. And so that volume, uh, you know, partial sum of squares is exactly the same as the extra sums of squares for volume, but advertising is different. Okay, so what advertising is saying is if I were to drop advertising, my objective function would increase by 68,000, and that's shown by the right bar. So the difference between here and here is 68,000. Okay, I'm going to go fit a different model. So it's, it's, it's really the same model, but I bring the variables in in different order. So let's bring volume in first, then advertising. And if we go look at our ANOVA, so these would be the extra sums of squares, what it says is now bringing in volume alone decreases the objective function by 28,000. So that would be the difference between this line and this line. Bringing in advertising decreases it further by 68,000. Now, what's really important to notice is that the sum of these two numbers, 68 plus 28, is the same as the sum of our two numbers up here, so 2.5 and 94,000. And what's left unexplained is exactly the same. It's, we, we've left unexplained 87,000 in both cases. We've just partitioned um, you know, what the model does in a different way. All right, now if we do a drop one on this other fitted object, notice we get exactly the same thing we had before. So volume, um, we get rid of volume, objective function increases by 94,000, get rid of advertising, objective function increases by 68,000. All right, so let me just summarize the key points over here. Uh, so total sums of squares is um, how much you leave unexplained if you have uh, only the intercept in the model. You think of it as residual sums of squares for the intercept model, the null model. Um, extra sums of squares um, show what happens if you start adding variables to the model. So how much does the objective function value decrease every time you bring another predictor in? As opposed to the drop one sums of squares or partial sums of squares where um, this is telling you what happens to the objective function if you drop it. So you can think about ANOVA as being like a forward, you know, I'm going to start bringing variables into the model. Uh, drop one is going backward, where if I drop one variable, what happens to me? We're going to be using these functions to do automatic model selection um, very soon, so that's why you know, we really need to uh, have some understanding of them. Uh, what you should note is for the last term in only, the extra sums of squares and the partial sums of squares are equal. Now, uh, these sums of squares are really useful to us for a lot of reasons, um, but one of those reasons is this F-test. So we've already met this F-test in the previous chapter. So if I want to test the null hypothesis that I get rid of all the predictors, so set all my slopes to zero versus at least one of these is doing something for me. This is really a, um, a comparison between this reduced model with only the intercept and the full model where you let all the parameters be in there and if, if they're non-zero, they, they're non-zero. Okay, so let's go um, you know, fit, the, um, fit the model and um, we can do um, a test between any full model and any reduced model. In this case, our reduced model is the null model with the following F statistic. Now, this is a very important um, formula. Uh, the way to think about this is how much do my sums of squares change if I bring in some predictors. So if I go from the reduced model to the full model, how much does my objective function decrease? And then we divide that by the number of degrees of freedom that you've brought in. 
and then we normalize all this by looking at the mean squared error, by dividing by the mean squared error. So let's go try this for the models we have at hand. So um, what was the uh, sums of squares for our full model? Well, it was 184,000. If I bring both of my predictors in, my sums of squares are now 87,000. So the difference between these two was given to us on this previous slide. So, um, you know, th th that would be the distance from the bottom line up to the model sums of squares. Uh, so that's, that's what's being shown in the numerator, divided by the number of degrees of freedom. So I have two predictors in the model. I constrain those two to be zero to get to my reduced model. So my null hypothesis up here is, you know, get rid of those two betas, and that's why we stick a two down there. Then um, our denominator is the mean squared error, which is just 87,000 divided by 21. If we go back here, you're going to see that's exactly what's shown right here. So 87,000 with 21 degrees of freedom. Um, divide this by this, you get 4,155. And so there, this is actually 4,155 if you do the division. If you do um, all of the division, you end up with an F statistic, which is 11.65. And you're going to notice um, that's actually, hold on, that, that's what's shown right here. Here is your F statistic, 11.65. So that's where that's coming from. Um, this has 2 and 21 degrees of freedom. So 2 is what, what you have in the numerator, 21 is what you have in the denominator. And um, we can go do a 1 minus the uh, cumulative F distribution. So insert the F statistic and the 2 degrees of freedom. And you end up with the p-value that gets reported here. All right. One more um, uh, thing about this is we could do, instead of all predictors versus none, we could do it for a single predictor. So let's go do that. Suppose that I wanted to get rid of um, just volume. Okay, so we're going to constrain beta 2 equal to 0 versus allowing it to be non-zero. And um, what, what, um, what I'm going to do down here is, is, is show both the ANOVA and the DROP1, and they give you identical answers. But let's talk about the F-test that is being conducted here. So in the numerator, we put what's the change in the sums of squares by getting rid of volume? And the answer is you lose about 94,000. How many degrees of freedom did I get rid of? Well, I got rid of one degree of freedom. And then I'm going to keep the same uh, denominator. That's just my mean squared error. So the F statistic, if you do the math, is about 22.7. And that's showing up in both of these places. Okay, we can go do our, um, our lookup, our, our table lookup, and you will have exactly the p-value that's reported here. Now, uh, I'll just note one thing. Let's remember 0 0.0001048. This is exactly equal to what we got when I did a summary, 0.0001048 on the previous slide. This got round, rounded to 5, but it's the same number. The reason for that is the t-tests that we're doing with the summary output for a single predictor are equivalent. You know, t is just a special case of an f distribution, and so these, um, you know, these p-values equal each other exactly. Now, the, the benefit of the F-test is that we can test multiple predictors, as we did with the overall significance test. We're going to run into this again when we do uh, dummy variables in a couple, um, uh, in a lecture or two. All right, so let me just summarize the key points that, that I've made in this uh, mini, lectual, mini lecture. So we're, um, we're, we're inching towards a, a very important topic, which is model selection. Model selection involves picking some model, uh, you could say between the null, where you have all your predictors set to zero, and, and the full model. So um, the sums of squares in this help us by keeping track 
of how much each variable um, explains when you bring it in. ANOVA generates extra sums of squares. The way to think about extra sums of squares is when you start adding terms to a model, what happens to the objective function? Um, important to note that they depend on the order of the terms. Drop one, on the other hand, goes the other way, where you start with a full model and you just say, what happens if I drop that term from the model? These are not dependent on the order. So drop one is going to be very useful to us, even if we're not doing hypothesis testing, we're going to use it with um, stepwise selection and so forth. Um, but uh, we can also do F tests with these uh, drop one and ANOVA sums of squares for um, uh, testing some hypotheses. All right, that's it for our, um, our introduction to model accounting and the F test.